So let's put on record everything we more or less said the other day about how the whole project started when you first sort of realized nothing had been done about Larry before. Right, well, the, the true fact is I was looking for a job for myself. And sometimes you have to create it. And so that was part of the impetus. But also I was producing DVD special features uh, for Image Entertainment. And one day for some reason while I was you know, doing stuff for them, I went to Larry's IMDB page, and I'm a fan of Larry's work. I know all his films, I knew a fair amount of his TV shows. And I'm looking at all this stuff, and I'm going, wow, there's way more here than I ever knew. But the thing that also impressed me was the fact that Larry was shuttling between his independent stuff and mainstream with a certain ease that I don't think anybody has ever done in the history of film and television. Because back in the day, back in Larry's day, you were pigeonholed. In fact, he was pigeonholed in television in the 60s, and because of that, he wanted to get out of it and do his own stuff. So I'm going, well, this is sort of intriguing. And it was in the back of my mind, and I said, maybe there's a project here. And then we tried crowdfunding it, and I was, I was absolutely horrible at it. I, I failed spectacularly. And then I met my, my, my producing partners, Matt Verboys and Dan McKeon, and I told them I had this idea. And Matt said the famous words, which I'm trying to make famous, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to do it. And here we are. We did it. And when you first approached Larry about the idea, I mean, he was like, was he very positive? About it? Obviously, <laughs> his ego would obviously take well, over. But <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's when I was trying the crowdfunding thing, I said, yeah, maybe I ought to try and get in touch with this guy and see if he wants a documentary about himself. So I knew someone who knew him, and I got his phone number. And I called him up, and, you know, uh, guy picks up the phone. He goes, hello. And I said, hi, uh, looking for Larry Cohen, and it was Larry. And I explained very quickly what I wanted to do. He goes, and here's my bad Larry Cohen impersonation. Come on up to the house. So I went up to the house, the famous house that you see in all his movies in one way, shape, or form. And he made me a cup of coffee and gave me a couple of cookies, and I said what I said. And he said, well, if you can get it financed, I'll help any way I can. That took a little while, the financing part, but he was good to his word and he was happy to be a part of it and was very generous with his time and his archives, which when you're cutting a documentary, you're always going, what am I going to cut to? Well, I had plenty of stuff to cut to, so it was great. And I have Larry to thank for that. Mm. So I assume that you sort of like, you've got him, did you do it in blocks? Or did you just do one big, long sort of marathon sort of If I was talking? trying to do a marathon with Larry, I'd still be doing it. We did do it kind of in blocks, and each block was its, its own marathon. We learned very quickly that when you sit Larry Cohen in a chair, and you put a light on him, and you say, start telling me about your life and your career, he's off to the races. I make a joke. We could have said, okay, Larry, that's great. You just keep talking. We're going to have lunch. And if we came back three hours later, he still would be talking. He's amazing. I've done some commentary tracks with him. And... He's off. We, did, we have a, a commentary coming out for Hell Up in Harlem uh, in America that we did together. And Larry, Larry said, well, here's the DVD. We'll, we'll, we'll do it in sync to the DVD. And he says, if the DVD doesn't work, I'll just get started. I'll make it up. And, you know, I'm, I'm looking heavenward for guidance. But that worked out very well. And that's, that's going to be available. If it's not available now, very, very soon. I think at the end of August or begin, beginning of September in the States. But that was a lot of fun to do with Larry. So there was nothing he wouldn't talk about. Was there any part of his life that he thought was verboten, really? Or uh, he didn't say there was anything that was verboten. I wanted to stay mostly focused on his career because it was about his career, but also the whole point of the movie is trying to reveal who he is through the work and through the films. Uh, he suffered a tragedy when his sister had been murdered in Beverly Hills, the very well-known and respected uh, publicist, Ronnie Chasen. And I asked some questions about that, but as I was cutting the picture, I said, this is not about that. You know, it's about Larry's spirit as a, as a creator, his bullheadedness, his bluntness, his, his just willingness to just you know, walk through fire if he wanted to do that. And so that's what the movie was about, and that's so I stayed there. But he, Larry will talk to you about anything. You know, talk to him about Washington, get him started on Washington, we'd still be talking about it. So, yeah, he's great. He's, that, a, he's a fantastic subject. 
Mm. Absolutely. I mean, because everything he did, whether it be TV or movies, I mean, it was almost like landmark for that particular time. And it was so unique and so innovative, really, wasn't it? I mean, when you think of the movies like Q and God Told Me To is another well, favorite. Well, I'm, I'm a fan of his movies. I'm not a fan of every single one of his movies. Mm. But I always say that you see a Larry Cohen picture. They're not empty calories. You, there's always a takeaway with one of his movies. You know, some of his earlier movies are a little raw around the edges. And you say, well, that's not quite made maybe as slickly as something else. But the rawness is part of what makes it a Larry Cohen movie. And then his films became a bit more polished. I think he had more time, more money. But Larry's movies stick with you. You always take something away from them. I mean, a lot of movies today you go, you see, and you're hopefully amused for an hour and a half or two hours. And then you walk out and say, what are we going to have for dinner? Larry's movies kind of stick to you. I mean, Joe Dante says in the documentary, you know, that Larry is an idea machine. And if you look at all of Larry's work, there's always ideas peppered in there, even in his television stuff, even his screenplays for other people. So, yeah, a Larry, you know, at the end of all his movies, it says a Larry Cohen film. Mm -hmm. I think that's very earned credit. It's not just the fact that he, had, he sat in the director's chair and Larry never sat in any chair in his life. He's... He's always on the prowl, always on the move. So, yeah, it's Larry's mm. movies are always interesting, and I like I said, and I and I really like most of them. No problem. Everyone you asked to talk on camera did. They they all wanted to sort of add their own sort of like memories. Everybody that agreed to speak with us, they were all very candid and very open. We tried. There were one or two people who didn't want to talk to us, and there were one or two people I wanted to get, but I couldn't sort of make happen. And you know, after a certain point, you know, you say. I think we have enough. I mean, we have a really excellent cast, as I put it. You know, people are, I think, somebody said there it was a dizzying amount of people in the movie, which, as a filmmaker, I go, well, you yeah, know, I wish I had about four or five more, but after a certain point, you just have, you know, you say, am I going to tell the story? Can I tell the story? And, you know, I think we did okay. Mm -hmm.